If you are watching this video, it means that you want to learn more about refutation techniques. And we are here to talk about one of the main techniques, reductio ad absurdum, that we call in English proof by contradiction. There are various ways to look at it. Either you take the contrary of the present proposition that you want to refute, for instance, proposition A, and you show that the contrary is impossible or absurd, or you show that proposition A implies proposition B, necessarily, notably if it is a suppressed or a hidden premise. And then you show that B is impossible or absurd. And since a true proposition cannot imply a false proposition, then A cannot be true. During the coronavirus pandemic, I thought about what I believe is a good proof. The argument I wanted to refute is COVID-19 is just a flu in terms of global health impact. In that case, you can look directly at the implications of an explicit premise. You don't have to go for hidden ones. My proof by contradiction is the following. I don't know whether it's very good, but I'll let you be the judge of it. So, here is how it goes. If it's just a flu, then the number of patients that are admitted because of the disease should be similar to the one of the flu. It's clearly not the case, ergo, it's not just a flu. Let me give you another example drawn this time from the 19th century, it's a classic, and we owe it to Adam Sherman Hill. Skill in public speaking is liable to great abuse, it should therefore not be cultivated. Skill in public uh, speaking uh, is a, uh, liable to great abuse, but so are the best things in life, such as health, wealth, power, military skill. The best things in the world should therefore not be cultivated. The technique in this example of reductio ad absurdum consists in expliciting the suppressed premise that we should not cultivate things that are liable to great abuse, and then show that this hidden premise is clearly absurd. Of course, attempts to make a reductio ad absurdum sometimes fail. I assume some of you are familiar with this uh, sequence of Martin Python's Holy Grail. Oh, we have found a witch, may we burn her? And then the knight proceeds to ask, how they know it's a witch, she's a witch. So why, 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 why do witch burn? Hmm, because they are made of wood. And the whole discussion should have led at almost each step to a proof by contradiction. And it never does. And they do burn the witch in the end. I'm not going to explain it thoroughly, just go and watch it. It is a classic. So, proof by contradiction is a powerful technique, yet difficult to master. I suggest you explore other techniques like counterexamples and parallel reasoning as viable alternatives to proceed to simple and efficient refutations.